Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about roundabouts and how to navigate roundabouts successfully for the purposes of a road test. Had a comment from Raheem and he wanted some more information about how to navigate roundabouts. Now, if you're having some challenges in North America with roundabouts, little wonder. Roundabouts have only begun to make an appearance in the driving landscape and are new and even for veteran drivers They're having some challenges with roundabouts here in Canada and the United States as you can see here in the image With the new roundabout in Sycamore, British Columbia and the car going the wrong way on the roundabout So you need to be prepared for that here in North America now those of you in the UK in Europe Australia China and other parts of the world you're probably having a bit of a chuckle about our challenge with roundabouts making an appearance in the driving landscape because they are prolific in those countries and very much part and parcel of their driving landscape. Now, the reason that we're beginning to have an introduction of roundabouts in North America is because there are several benefits to roundabouts. First and foremost, there are less points of conflict for turning traffic in roundabouts. So therefore, there's less traffic crashes at roundabouts. And the next thing is, is that they facilitate a higher uh, level of traffic flow through the intersection. So therefore you have more cars going through the intersection per hour as opposed to a conventional intersection. And finally, the other benefit to roundabouts is there's less noise because there are fewer cars that are actually coming to a complete stop and then accelerating away from the intersection as you have in a conventional intersection. And for somebody who lived on a very busy corner here in Vernon, British Columbia, and a conventional intersection, I know all about urban noise because of traffic. And one last point that I'll make here in the introduction, when I moved to Australia, there was a real learning curve when it came to roundabouts and it took me a few months to get comfortable with roundabouts. Once you get comfortable with them, they're great. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna give you a bit more information and some techniques to deal effectively with roundabouts. So stick around, we'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test. Welcome back. Talking to you today about roundabouts. There are some very famous roundabouts in the world, and the one you can see here is the famous clock tower in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. You can also see here in the image one on Century Avenue in Pudong, Shanghai, China, which is another very famous one. And unfortunately, these are in time-lapse photography, and they look a little bit crazy when they're fast-forwarded in terms of traffic going through the roundabout. Probably one of the most famous roundabouts in the world is the one that surrounds the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, France. And you can see that this one is not well demarcated, that there aren't road markings, there aren't line markings to direct the traffic. It looks kind of like a melee. And for those of us who are uninitiated <laughs> in driving these roundabouts, this one is, and this other one here you can see in Italy, there are not good road markings on them. It could be a bit of a a challenge for us. And then those of us in North America feeling a little bit challenged by roundabouts, it has been uh, made a comedy by Griswold's European vacation where the Griswolds get stuck in the roundabout, as you can see here in the image, for a good long length of time and continue to go around for at least eight hours and continue to say, oh, look kids, Big Ben, Parliament, Big Ben, Parliament. <laughs> So if you're feeling a little bit challenged by roundabouts, little doubt. But for those of us uh, who have been initiated into roundabouts and lived in other countries where roundabouts are prolific, we can hopefully give you some information and some techniques about roundabouts here today. Now, most of the roundabouts in North America are going to be single lane. Very few of them are going to be multi-lane because we have a reluctance to put roundabouts in despite the benefits of roundabouts. And if you want to see a perfect example of roundabouts being screwed up in North America, the one in Victoria at the Victoria International Airport, there are five roads that meet at the junction and instead of putting in one multi-lane roundabout, engineers decided that it was a good idea to put in three roundabouts and an overpass instead of one big roundabout. So that shows you the reluctance in North America to put in roundabouts. Despite that they are making inroads into residential areas and many of them are single lane. Now as I said in the introduction when you're coming up to the roundabout you've got to be prepared to stop and go at the same time. And what I mean by that, you gotta be scanning well ahead at the roundabout and deciding if there's traffic in the roundabout, you have to yield to any traffic in the roundabout or traffic that's about to move into the roundabout that's going to impede your movement through the roundabout. Now, other countries, Australia and the UK, are specific on a road test about signaling in the roundabout and approaching 
the roundabout. So the best way to think about that when you're approaching the roundabout, if you're going to turn right, is to think of it like a conventional intersection. What would you do at a conventional intersection? If you're going to turn right at a conventional intersection, you're going to put your right signal on and indicate that you're going to go right. If you're going to proceed straight through the intersection, you're not going to put your signal on. And if you're going to turn left at the intersection, you're going to put your left signal on. Now, the best way to think about this in the intersection is to think of a line cutting the circle in half and if you cut the circle in half anything on the right side of the roundabout you're going to signal right to either turn right or proceed straight through the intersection as I said you don't have to put your signal on when you proceed straight through the intersection but when you're exiting put your right signal on to indicate to other traffic that you are in fact going to leave the roundabout now if you're on anything on that side of the roundabout on the left side of the roundabout you're going to signal left. If you're going to turn left or you're going to do a U-turn, you're going to signal left before you enter the roundabout to indicate to other traffic that you are in fact going to turn left or do a U-turn as you proceed through the intersection. So you're moving up. There are arrows to indicate in which direction the roundabout is flowing. For those of us on the right side of the road, it's going to be in a counterclockwise direction. For those of you on the left side of the road in the UK and Australia, it's going to be in a clockwise direction. Now, just the parts of the roundabout, just a quick overview. Uh, these are commonplace in terms of roundabouts, and these are called splitter islands. These simply move the traffic in the direction that flows around the roundabout. As well, almost all roundabouts in the UK, in Australia, in Canada, in North America, in the United States, all have yield signs. And there are specific yield signs, as you can see here in the image, that have the directional areas, arrows of which direction the traffic travels around the roundabout. For those of us in North America, particularly here in Canada, this red part around the inside circle of the roundabout is called the truck apron. This truck apron is for larger vehicles. Uh, to accommodate the off tracking because the rear wheels on the bigger vehicles take a shorter path than the front wheels and therefore are going to go up over this and it is slightly raised it's color stamp concrete it actually looks like paving stone but in fact it's a slight pink color and you can see that in the image here uh, which shows the truck apron and this is to accommodate larger uh, trucks lorries uh, semi trailers uh, large RV vehicles and buses and those types of things now this is a conventional intersection here in North America. One of the other things that they have in London and UK is they have a small, sometimes called traffic circles, but they're actually really small roundabouts. And sometimes they'll just have a traffic button in the, in the middle of the intersection. It's basically a conventional intersection where they put a dish, an upside down dish on the ground to make it into a, and a roundabout. And those are very small. And sometimes you might actually have to drive over the traffic button and some of the other videos that you find here on YouTube about uh, roundabouts and those types of things, you're going to have to just drive over the round uh, over the traffic button because you're not going to be able to get around it here. So essentially, those are the parts of the roundabout. As I said, in North America, you're going to find that they have these truck aprons on them, and they're slightly elevated, and that's to dissuade passenger vehicles for going up over them. They're just for larger vehicles and those types of things. Now, signaling when you come in, if you're coming here and you're going to make a right-hand turn, you signal right before you get into the roundabout, and then simply uh, yield give the right of way to all traffic in the intersection and any pedestrians who might be crossing at the crosswalks prior to the roundabout and you simply if you don't have to stop if you don't have to give the right of way to any other vehicles or road users in the roundabout you simply turn right and then look up and uh, accelerate into the path of travel now if you're going straight through you don't have to signal but if practicable which means if you can do it when you get to this position you would put your right signal on to indicate to other traffic that you are in fact going to leave the roundabout. Now, if you're going to turn left as you're coming up to the inter uh, up to the roundabout rather, you would put your left signal on, yield to any other traffic or road users in the roundabout and then simply follow this path and exit left out of the roundabout. Now, as you're moving around here, you're watching other traffic and you're covering the brake. Now, if you make mistakes when you first go into the roundabouts and you're first learning how to do it, 
Keep in mind that other traffic in the roundabout is doing the same thing that, they're, that you're doing. They're also scanning for other traffic and they're going to give ways. You can see here in the image, this guy that backed up in front of me today in a roundabout, there's a house right on the one edge of the roundabout and he backed out into the roundabout. So I had to slow down and stop. So other traffic is also watching and looking as you're moving through the roundabout. So if you make a mistake, it's not going to be terminal in most cases. And the other reason that we have roundabouts and that roundabouts are beginning to make appearances on our uh, driving landscape is because there are left, less points of conflict in the roundabout and it's less likely that you're going to have a crash. Now the last thing that you may do in a roundabout, and they're very handy for this, if you lose your way and you need to go back and do a U-turn, same thing as what you're doing with a left hand turn. Put your left hand signal and when you get to this point uh, in the roundabout, you're going to change your signal and put your right hand signal on to indicate to other traffic that you are going to exit the roundabout. So that's how you proceed and do a U-turn through the intersection. So it's simply in this path of travel. At this juncture, put your right hand signal on and then exit the roundabout. So that's how you do it. And again, when you're proceeding through the roundabout, as you're coming up to the roundabout, slow to 20 kilometers an hour, 12 miles an hour for those of you in the US. If you're driving a manual transmission, have it into second gear, cover the brake and be prepared to stop as you're approaching the roundabout. And again, looking far down the road, locating the roundabout and looking for vehicles approaching in from the left. If you're on the right side of the road, if you're on the other side of the road, you're gonna be looking for cars coming from the right that are going to impede you moving into the roundabout. And as well, you're going to have to be looking at the other vehicles that are approaching the roundabout so that you can smoothly enter into the roundabout because the purpose of roundabouts is so you don't have to stop. But if there are other vehicles that are going to impede your progress into the roundabout, you're going to have to stop. The next thing we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about multi-lane roundabouts just briefly here. If you have a multi-lane roundabout, which is unlikely in North America, more likely in Europe and Australia, essentially you need to again think of it like a conventional intersection. If you're going to make a left-hand turn, you want to be in the left-hand lane. If you want to make a right-hand turn, you want to be in the right-hand lane as you're approaching the roundabout. And again, if you're in the right-hand lane, you're simply going to make a right turn or you're going to proceed straight through. Again, with a multi-lane intersection, conventional intersection, same thing. If you have a multi-lane roundabout and you want to proceed straight through you can also be in the left lane to proceed straight through but if you're going to make a left hand turn you want to move over to the left hand lane and then proceed in the left hand lane and stay in that left hand lane as you proceed through the roundabout come around here and stay in that left hand lane you want to avoid at all possibility changing lanes in the roundabout because there's just too many things going on in the roundabout to be changing lanes as well. Think of it like changing lanes in a conventional intersection. It's just too dangerous. So most of the rules that apply to conventional intersections also apply to roundabouts. And if it is a multi-lane roundabout, you want to be in the lane of the direction you're going to turn. So if it's two lanes, you want to be in the far left lane to turn left or to do a U-turn. If you're going to turn right, you want to be in the right-hand lane to turn right or proceed straight through. You can also be in that left lane. Now, if you're driving a larger vehicle, a large RV, a bus, or a truck, you want to be in the outside lane to go around the roundabout. That way you're going to compensate for the off-tracking as you're moving through the roundabout. And that's multi-lane roundabouts. Now, as I said, in North America, it's unlikely you're going to encounter multi-lane roundabouts. More likely that you're going to encounter multi-lane roundabouts, Europe, uh, Australia, and other places, China, and the Middle East, and whatnot. But for the most part, these are rare, and essentially just stay in your lane and think of it like a conventional intersection. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go to the car, and we're going to drive through some roundabouts, do some right turns, some left turns, and some U-turns, and show you how to do that. So we're approaching the roundabout here. We can see the sign on the right that says 20 kilometers an hour and it indicates which direction that you travel in the, on this roundabout and it is counterclockwise. And if you're driving a manual transmission, it's recommended that you go into second gear. We're looking to the left, we don't see anybody and we're proceeding straight through the roundabout and just leave it into second gear. And we look up and accelerate in the direction that we wanna go. So we're gonna turn left at the intersection here. Counterclockwise directions, recommended 20 kilometers an hour. Signal to the left, 
put the vehicle into second gear, which brings us down to approximately 20 kilometers an hour. The roundabout is clear, steering all the way through, watching the other roadways that merge and proceeding through and accelerating. And we're gonna go left at the next roundabout as well. Left signal on as I'm entering the intersection. Signaling left. And immediately before exiting, I signal right, telling other traffic that I'm exiting the roundabout. We're gonna proceed right at the roundabout. Mirror signal shoulder check. Direction of the roundabout is counterclockwise. Yield to other traffic, nobody in the pedestrian crosswalk. We have a vehicle coming in and he has momentum. We did not have momentum because we're going uphill and I was slowing down because I was scanning the pedestrian crosswalk. We stop and now we wait for the gap to go. Shoulder checking and we don't have time to signal. We've already signaled right prior to the roundabout so we just simply turn right at the roundabout we're going to turn left at this roundabout i indicate left as i'm approaching the roundabout nobody in the crosswalk or the zebra crossing as they call it in the uk into second gear i'm scanning there's nobody coming we're good that way good at this intersection and immediately just before we signal to the right and exit the roundabout Turn left at the roundabout. We signal left as we're approaching. Nobody in the pedestrian crosswalk. It's good at the junction. Nobody coming from the other direction. We're good. And just before we exit the roundabout, put on our right signal and exit and no pedestrians. So we've located the roundabout in front of us. We've looked up at the roundabout. We've discovered that it's 20 kilometers an hour and it's counterclockwise and we're gonna do a u-turn here nobody in the roundabout the junctions are good there's no one coming there's a vehicle coming from that direction and they're slowing and where practical we turn our right signal on and proceed all right so we're going to turn left we've located the roundabout counterclockwise direction coming up nobody in the pedestrian crosswalk actually there is someone in the pedestrian crosswalk and we need to stop proceed after the pedestrian attains the curb I'll put a card up in the corner for you about how far you have to be from pedestrians left signal checking the junction no one coming left signal put our right signal on indicating we're going to exit and we exit the roundabout Okay, we've located the roundabout. We're gonna turn right at the roundabout. We can see that it's 20 kilometers an hour or less, counterclockwise direction. We have the signs that indicate it's a roundabout and we have to yield. Yield to traffic in roundabout. And we're scanning to the left here. We have a right signal on, shoulder check, scanning the other traffic, and we proceed out of the roundabout. Quick review of roundabouts. Yes, in North America, the United States and Canada, roundabouts are beginning to make an appearance in the driving landscape, but we as drivers, even veteran drivers, are not accustomed to roundabouts because we did not grow up with roundabouts as people in Europe and people in Australia and other countries have that they've grown up driving around in motor cars and encountering roundabouts. And if you look at some of the roundabouts in the world driving videos, put a link down here in the video for you, uh, Europe especially and the UK take roundabouts to a whole new level. Now, if you're operating through roundabouts here in North America, think of them like a conventional intersection. If you're gonna turn right or you're gonna proceed straight through, stay in the right lane, put your right signal on. Now, if you're gonna turn left or do a U-turn, you're gonna put your left signal on as you're approaching the roundabout to indicate to other traffic that you're gonna move left and or you're gonna do a U-turn. Now, if you're exiting the roundabout, if practicable, if you can do it, put your right signal on to indicate to other traffic that you are exiting out of the roundabout. Now, when you're coming up to the roundabout, obey the speed signs. Most of the time in Canada, it's 20 kilometers an hour. In the States, it's going to be 10 miles an hour, 10 to 15 miles an hour. Slow to that speed if you're driving an automatic 
and cover the brake as you're coming up to the roundabout. Look far down the road and identify the vehicles and road users that are in the roundabout and be prepared to stop by covering the brake. If you don't have to stop, you don't have to stop, proceed through the intersection. Most roundabouts will have a give way sign, which means that you have to yield or give the right of way to traffic in the roundabout or other road users. Now, most of the Roundabouts in Canada and the United States have uh, pedestrian crosswalks preceding them, so ensure that you're uh, looking for uh, pedestrians and those types of things. In the UK, they call them zebra crossings. So if you ever heard that term before, zebra crossings is essentially a pedestrian crosswalk prior to the roundabout. Now, one point that I didn't cover in the topics is emergency vehicles. If you're in the roundabout and you hear a emergency vehicle or see an emergency vehicle approaching the roundabout, you may have to exit and then pull over to the side of the road. Don't pull over in the roundabout. There's just too much going on there in terms of emergency vehicles. So the easiest way to think about roundabouts, think of them like conventional intersections. What would you do at a conventional intersection? If you're turning right or proceeding straight, Put your right signal on if you're turning right. You don't have to signal if you're proceeding straight through. If you're turning left or you turn simply put your uh, left signal on. And again, for those drivers practicing for the purposes of a road test and you have roundabouts in and around the licensing center, go out and practice going through those roundabouts so that you're familiar with them because there is a learning transition. It is very different because there is uh, spatial orientation that's going on which is the left side of the brain is responsible for that and you have to determine speed and space of other road users and traffic in the roundabout as you're approaching the roundabout and you have to find a gap for you to proceed through because ideally you don't want to stop now as i said in the prologue of this video if you are moving into the roundabout and you miscalculate the gap it's unlikely that you're going to experience a crash and if you do experience a crash it's going to be a minor crash because there are less points of conflict in a roundabout and other drivers are doing the same thing that you're doing as you're coming into the roundabout they're scanning they've got their brake covered they're prepared to stop and they're watching other vehicles in the roundabout because when you get a little bit of experience with roundabouts you know that you're always looking for other traffic you're making sure that other traffic is coming to a stop as you're proceeding through the roundabout especially if you're making a left-hand turn and going past the other roadways that intersect with the roundabout and making sure that the traffic is in fact coming to a stop so it's less likely that you're going to experience a crash in a roundabout if you misjudge the gap as you're coming up to it so that may um, give you a bit of comfort for those of you learning how to navigate roundabouts knowing that there are fewer points of conflict and that all of the other drivers are sort of aware and more aware particularly in north america that they're trying to look out for the traffic and make sure it actually stops so take comfort in that and knowing that there are fewer points of conflict and other drivers are probably looking out as well question for my smart drivers do you have any tips for new drivers learning how to navigate roundabouts and things that they should do in order to learn how to do that successfully and do that for the purposes of a road test leave a comment down in the comment section there all of that helps out the new drivers working towards getting their license i'm rick with smart drive test thanks very much for watching if you like what you see here share subscribe leave a comment down in the comment section as well hit that thumbs up button. Check out all the videos here on the channel. If you're working towards getting a license or starting a career as a truck or bus driver, lots of great information here as well. Head over to the website, good information over there and online courses that you can purchase. Stick around to the end of the video, funny bits and links to the other videos and to my website. Thanks again for watching. Good luck on your road test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now.